A busy, challenging track, three classes, a huge field. It's time for Sports Car Wars. And we should explain it'll be a rolling start because of that huge field today, unable to fit on the front straight. And they are bringing it up, Popes, with teammate Figgy alongside. Watch for the launch here as they come down. The green flag flies, and it is Popes with Figgy. Is Figgy going to be able to get over and protect? Boy, he's trying. Clearly, Pilgrim did not want to have that happen. And look at the move right there around the outside, as you talked about by Jordan Taylor. Into the Motul braking zone, and Jordan Taylor slides that caddy with the yellow side view mirrors up to third. There we see the gap, and then the GTS field filing through turn four, led by P.D. Cunningham. Yeah, it looks like a Saiyan able to tuck in there. So it's two team one-twos in GT and GTS. There's Cunningham in the first of the Acuras. Yeah, the Acura is really strong here, a one-two in qualifying with his teammate Nick is saying right beside him. There you see the Volvo's lead. Typically we see that from the standing start, but very unusual. A rolling start here today at Mid-Ohio with this massive field and a tight run to turn one. On board now with your touring car leader, Michael Cooper, in that Mazda Speed Mazda 3. And you can see right behind him, well, actually a great run through those last couple of corners. And he was able to get a little bit of a gap on Tristan Herbert in that H uh, HPA Brimtech VW. But Cooper looking very strong here in the early going. He is, and uh, he's looking really good in the championship as well. So this is really a pivotal race weekend. Double header, lots of points on hand to really go in that final round in Sonoma. So look at this move, James Safronis. Usually we look at that white and blue Porsche, but here he is in the GMG Swisher racing Audi R8. Talk about a pretty car. Wow. It's a beautiful car. Anders Hainer typically campaigns this car. He had to miss this weekend, so James is behind the wheel. And this is in the GTS category. Some fierce action, to be sure. Uh, while we were at break, however, some action up front in GT as Johnny O'Connell made this move to the inside of turn one on Andy Pilgrim. Well, heavy traffic there down into uh, turn one. That moves Johnny O up to the fourth position. But look at this traffic amongst the classes here at Mid-Ohio. It is a wild ride here. That, oh, very close there for Jordan Taylor working traffic. Oh, big moment right there as Lindsay gets a little loose in the Hawk Performance Vet. And Steve Ott tried to sneak through in that Racing for Our Heroes Loctite Porsche. Couldn't quite get it done. Oh, spin there for Rick Bechet going into turn nine. Tough to get out of those gravel traps. Been clean so far, Greg. Boy, and that's an unusual place to have a, an off like that. Oh, and he almost got out and then got high sided. And now he's going to get buried. Cal, let's take a look at what happened. Coming down here into the break zone, you can see there just gets a little bit wide. You see the smoke up ahead. That could have distracted him from that Camaro. And he goes around and just rolls it back into that gravel trap. I thought he was going to get out, and it stalled momentarily. Here's the onboard at it, and that lockup, just brake lockup. But, yeah, I think you're right. Target fixation, in a way. And off he got. And you know what? This could be a yellow, because that's a place you don't want a car to be off track. And uh, he's going nowhere. Meanwhile, Popes, Figgy, and the trio of caddies working their way through that traffic. Popes gets through cleanly. And when you can gap traffic a little better than everybody else, that gives you a nice breather. And we do have a full course yellow. And we are about to go back to green. Popes able to lead him away. He's got that friendly face in his mirrors. And teammate Alex Figgy on board with Pat Lindsay. And immediately he dives down to the inside of Sophronis trying to return that pass down into turn one and makes it work. Look at him. Aschenbach. Yeah, Aschenbach is on the move too. That was a great move by Lindsay. They're really working the car hard as those Pirellis come up to temperature there in turn one. Well, let's take a look and see how the Porsche and the Audi compare down this straightaway. Pretty even there. Mid-range looked like the Porsche a bit stronger. Wow, James Sofronis takes it in deep. Wow, the Audi's really <laughs> handling well here. Good job by James Sofronis. That was cool. Yeah, we're going to take a look at a big move here, and that is Tristan Herbert sliding underneath Michael Cooper. Boy, after the restart, he was able to make that one work. Cooper tries to come back at him, Cal. Yeah, that's down in that Motul braking zone again. You can't go side by side there, but Tristan Herbert, a great move for the lead. And it's traffic, always an issue here in the 10th round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships, the Cadillac Mid-Ohio Grand Prix presented by StopTech. Close. Randy Pope's there, our overall leader, to really squeeze inside one of those VWs. And there we see the rest of the caddies getting stacked up a little bit through turn one. So Cadillacs are on the prowl, but right now Volvos lead the way. Going back into Turing Car, good battle here between Ray Mason and Shea Holbrook and a couple of Honda Civic SIs. And we got some great onboard looks here, Cal. Yeah, Kevin Gleason currently running in the third spot. But look at that, the two Acuras are right ahead of him. He is chasing them down. Very impressive here on his World Challenge debut for this year anyways had a race before last year in the VW. And Popeston Figgy leading those three Cadillacs, continuing to work traffic. 
And every time the caddies get close, they get hung up just like that, a little bit in traffic, and uh, they lose maybe two, three, four car lengths. Oh, and a oh, big nice moment save. right there. <laughs> Huge moment by Dane Moxlow and was able to hang that one together. Wow. Great piece of car control there by Dane to keep that together. That is a really tricky corner up over the top of turn nine. It really lights up the rear wheels there if you're on the power hard, and he got it together nicely. But these Volvos really launch off the corner well, Greg. So if you stack up in traffic, suddenly you get the power down. The all-wheel drive really works. The caddies, however, are very impressive into the brake zones. Oh, oh problems. Oh. Figgy slow. Figgy is slow in the second of the Volvos. Caddies fly by. Oh, the guy who won here in the first round here at Mid-Ohio. Boy, he's pulling off. This is terminal, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, his day is done, Greg. Something broke maybe in the drive line or something. Just suddenly, no launch off the corner. We're heading toward the conclusion of this 10th round of the Proly World Challenge Championships, the Cadillac Mid-Ohio Grand Prix, presented by StopTech. An overall leader coming up into the lead in the GTS category, Randy Popes. Now chasing down the two Acuras from Real Time Racing of Cunningham and Nick Asayan. And Randy Popes up and over that section called Madness and now into Thunder Valley. Look how balanced the car is though, Greg. He really wasn't working the steering wheel hard over there, just floating over the top. This is a really high speed corner, turn nine. Coming down a gear right in the middle of the apex. Grip is going away a little bit. I think he'd normally hold that gear a little bit longer, but just really focusing. But he'll be thinking about it. He knows he hasn't had a World Challenge win here before, Greg. And he comes up to the white flag. Yeah, exactly. This is going to be a huge moment if he can hang on for this one. Coming up on Brian Kleeman. Kleeman leaves the door open. Randy is through. One last turn to the left, onto the front straight, and Randy Popes has done it. He's broken the duck. He gets his first World Challenge win here at Mid-Ohio, his 28th career win, second on the season, and did so with style. Speaking of guys with lots of wins, P.D. Cunningham, Cal, this is going to end up, if he makes it, and he certainly looks like it, his 43rd record-extending win in Pirelli World Challenge competition at a track where these guys, this team, and this driver excels. They do. I mean, the track is supported by Honda, the Marysville plant just down the road here, so a lot of fans and factory support here today. Tristan Herbert comes across after getting around Cooper for the win in Touring Car. The Phoenix, she came back. <laughs> The K-Pax Volvo Phoenix has risen from the ashes after a little bit of a fire at Moe Sport. The team spent a long time in the shop rebuilding this same number six Volvo S60. And I'll tell you what, it's a fast car. It has never run better. We got a little help from the rewards weight on the Cadillacs. It would be interesting <laughs> if they had none like I do. And I'm sorry to see Alex go out. He was driving a great race right with me. But a special thanks to the whole K-Pax Volvo team to uh, John Maloney, the president and CEO of Volvo Cars North America, who's here today, taking time out of his busy schedule. To all our Vol guests from the local Volvo dealers, and a special thanks to Cadillac and to StopTech for sponsoring the World Challenge race this weekend with Pirelli. For another great day in Mid-Ohio, uh, how, how do you keep doing it? I don't know, we just love Mid-Ohio. These Acuras are just fantastic around here. I've been coming to Mid-Ohio for more than half my life, so it was a, a great day for HPD and Acura and all our sponsors. I'd like to dedicate this victory to my friend Fred Meyer. He uh, was with Real Time as a driver for seven years, uh, and he's fighting some health issues right now, but he's getting better, and we wish him well. So, Fred, take care, buddy, and we'll hope to see you soon. When we come back, it'll be the 11th round of the championship. Stay with us.